Hey all, Golden Boy here, and today we're going to be talking about Rox D. Zebeck, and we have our friend Simply Kevin on today. How you doing, Kev? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, good to have you on. I've been trying to make sure I can get all my friends on collabs. So let's just uh, jump right into it, because I'm sure everybody's wondering what kind of man Rox D. Zebeck is. He's a mysterious character. Personally, I actually like to think that Rox wasn't too much of a villain, because the the way that the world government paints him, he's this horrible criminal, he's this horrible pirate, that's the, kind of the same sort of stuff they say about Luffy. I'm a little interested to see why Roger had to fight against him. So I'm, I'm just assuming, like everyone says, he's going to be similar to, to Teach. He wants freedom, but he wants freedom through control. Uh, they say he wanted to be king of the world, so I actually think he's going to be very charismatic with a lot of ambition. I bet in real life I probably would like Rox. Maybe he's kind of like, like Kanye or, or, you know, just like some of these celebrities that have big heads and big ambitions. What are your thoughts? What, what do you think Rox was like? One thing we should make ourselves clear is that you can be, for instance, a charismatic person, but ruthless to those that oppose you, right? In this case, it could be the world government or the Marines, but also other pirates. For instance, think about it this way, Captain Golden Boy. There are definitely pirates who agreed with Zebek's philosophy, right? Both on the crew or whatever. And there are going to be pirates who disagree with those ideas however much or little did Zebek really reveal to the other people. Now, I believe that it's one of those things where if you don't join, uh, you don't get a second chance. It's basically like a, like a join or die join type or die. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, of course, I'm not talking about how uh, he recruited the members, that will be later, but it's more so, uh, for example, with Roger. I believe Roger was uh, Zebek's greatest enemy, simply because of three reasons. The first one is because for, he's strong, but more so, he is defiant. He refuses to collaborate or join Zebek, unlike all those other pirates that somehow managed to make their way under his banner one way or another. So I feel like the same thing that we saw with Shiki later on in the Ed War and leading Shiki. up to it, where Shiki tried to recruit Roger many times to his side, you know, signing a great plan, signing this ancient weapon, this foolproof thing that he's been working on for many, many months. And Roger each time declined that until a fateful battle took place. That's a good point. So that's what I think could be the case with Roger and Zebek. And the fateful battle in this case is simply God Valley. Now I kind of want to know how Kaido kind of met Zebek. I, I guess like off the top of my head, if I had to give an answer, I would say Kaido probably met Zebek because he was looking for an escape. Uh, Kaido has been hinting at that he's been abused in the past by humans, that they feared him and his race. I'd like to think that Kaido is one of the last of his race because they were persecuted, maybe similar to King's Lunarians. So I think he saw um, kind of a, a safe place in Zebek. Um, th that, that's a possibility for how he ran into them. Although we do know with Big Mom's flashback, she said, is this your first time working with Zebek? So... Uh, we, we really have no clue but yeah my my gut feeling is that he needed to be with somebody strong so he could train up and become strong enough to defend himself or maybe avenge his family what about you what are your thoughts so what I think to give an alternative perspective is that Kaido could have possibly been rescued maybe he was drifted or marooned on an island uh, maybe Kaido somehow stumbled his way towards uh, Beehive Island, right? The place where uh, people believe the Davy Back fights occurred, where most of the pirates uh, joined the Rocks, Rocks crew. Maybe Kaido was just one of them. And then he randomly met Big Mom on board the ship when she was like welcoming the recruits or whatever, right? That could be one example. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one that I like a little bit more is uh, is uh, kind of like a twist on your thing, but it's more like Kaido uh, had nowhere else to go. So it's kind of like Blackbeard. He intentionally sought out the, the Rocks Pirates. Maybe he heard about them from like a rumor saying like they're the most vicious 
cruel or they're like the most most terrifying like you have to be careful just you know meeting them is a possible death sentence right maybe that attracted kaido uh, attention and he's like yo i gotta make myself you know known maybe yeah. he like meets the bag he throws himself down or whatever he's like you know take me with you whatever right yeah, and the bag kind of like looks at him he laughs and he's like you know you're in <laughs> you're in i like you kid you're in yeah yeah i mean that could be uh one way uh, it's just that you know this whole kaido persecution this whole oni possible lineage this has to be really really explored by oda in the flashback i would love if kaido was actually an oni and one of the three missing races that big mom currently does not have right giants right. lunarians and maybe the oni yeah. so you know, it's just my head cannon. There's no <laughs> evidence or any of that right now, but time will tell what will occur. Right, time will tell. Yeah, I, I do like to think that um, Kaido looked up to rocks in a way uh, that that feels like that would make sense to me. Uh, but again, we, we just need to see that fleshed out. I'd also like to see uh, more about God Valley. I feel like God Valley is one of those buzzwords where you, you have to include it in all of your videos. But we don't know a whole lot about it, but you just know that it's it's like a ticking time bomb of lore. Uh, so where, where did it go? It says that God Valley disappeared. I, I would assume that it means it got, you know, kind of buster called or, you know, like disappeared in the sense like the Void Century got disappeared. Uh, I guess God Valley, we, we don't know a whole lot about it, but it makes me think that this is where you know, rocks went to go terrorize celestial dragons. Maybe this is originally one of their domains, because we, we do know that the rocks pirates kind of operated like a, a terrorist group, setting up these little stunts. And so God Valley, he just happened to catch Roger and Garp there. Bad day to be a rocks Zebek, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so I'm assuming he was just committing some war crimes or something against these celestial dragons. And then um, the ultimate tag team took him down, and then the Marines covered it all up. Nobody knows what happened. Do you agree with that, or do you have a different take? Well, just like in real life, in One Piece, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. So while the Marines might consider Rox Zebek and his crew uh, terrorists, uh, that does not mean that the pirate side saw it the same way, if you get what right. I mean. Yeah, and I mean, I don't like the Celestial Dragons, they're dicks. Right, exactly. So, you know, so Straw Hats are technically speaking terrorists in terms of the public and the world government view. I mean, they did declare war on the world government in, in a sloppy. It's a pretty popular belief that God Valley was like a kind of like a vacation resort or like a retreat for the Celestial Dragons and, and their slaves. It could have been like a Marie Joie version too, where it's like another place for them to rule over more or less because it always kind of irked me like are the celestial dragons only living in this one spot on this castle or city you know pangea castle right above the red line the but world of one piece is beautiful you'd think there'd be a nice little vacation home for them to go who cares about exactly that right so, castle? so that's why people think you know god valley is like this emerald city or could have like a, a special religious or ceremonial purpose right for example i saw this one theory on the one piece fan page a few years ago I, I don't know who was the original person, but uh, that page essentially stated that uh, God Valley is nicknamed this way because there are like these mountains or crystals, right? And the way the light shines through, that makes it seem like it's from a god. You know, maybe Rox sees a Beck, he planned it out, and he's like, you know, we're gonna attack them at this moment. And what I think, uh, Captain Golden Boy, is he didn't tell his crew necessarily why they're attacking like he could have told them like you know there's these celestial dragons i know you guys don't like them so we'll just attack them right but i'm sure there was a material or physical aspect in that island that Zebek wanted for himself that he didn't really tell his crew one way or another i see god valley as a stepping stone an important one in Zebek's plan towards to take world domination world. yeah yes so what what I want Oda to tell us is how far did Zebek advance in this, I don't know, maybe decades old plan of his, right? Before his defeat. Because he could have been either on the cusp of it or still far behind. 
Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I don't know how Odo's gonna be able to fit everything in this story. I'm glad we have things like the SBS, uh, just to give us the additional details. I always get excited when we get to see those. He's telling us all of these, like, fun facts, but sometimes he throws, like, really important hints in there, too. If I were able to choose what the next SBS would be, I would like Oda to kind of do a, uh, quote-unquote, good future, bad future for the emperors. And uh, at the same time, we could maybe figure out, you know, which countries are these emperors from in real life. For example, is Kaido really from Mongolia? Is, you know, Big Mom maybe French because the Charlotte, new Charlotte mm -hmm. right? Or is Newgate from, you know, England because of Newgate Prison in London? Or, you know, Edward Teach, that kind of stuff. Et cetera, oh, yeah. et cetera, you know, it's Shanks from Scandinavia. Also, so speaking, you, you just mentioned the, the real life pirates where they were from. Yep. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of it, and probably a lot of the people watching have too, but so Rox's namesake was almost certainly taken from Roche Brasiliano, and he was a, a pirate from, you know, real life. Possibly adapt. It's a possibility, right? Because right, yeah, Oda does true. adapt real life pirate names and figures into like the Supernovas, for instance. So I can't put it past him into, you know, Roche, Roche Brasiliano. But go on. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, I, I did a little bit of research on him before. I mean, I don't know a, a whole lot about him. There's actually not a whole lot of information about him from real life either, just like rocks. But uh, one thing I did notice is that Roche has his base of operations was Port Royal. The cool thing about Port Royal, if you didn't know, is that uh, part of it got struck by an earthquake and then sunk below the waves. And so that yep. got me wondering, like, so is that going to happen to Hachinosu, the pirate paradise? Or is that what happened to even God Valley? Because God Valley is gone. They can't find it. It's not like it's unmarked. It's just dead ass gone. Maybe it sunk below the waves. That's kind of what they were thinking happened in the uh, Skypea arc, trying to dive underwater, trying to find their sunken island. I don't know. There's a there's a chance that that happened. Well, as much as I would love to have an actual island finally being sunk in this series for once, right? Not just a buster call or anything of that <laughs> sort. Uh, it kind of pains me to say there's probably something else that might have happened, like a crazy alternative, because. Especially in the anime, the way Sengoku framed the whole dialogue, where he mentions that it's like you can't find God Valley even if you wanted to. Like the world government probably intended to erase what happened, but the island got erased anyways. Like, like it's like someone did the work for them. You get what I mean? It's like they made their job easier to erase rocks and his kind of like his legacy over the next generation. And then the island where they fought was also pretty much, you know, straight up disappeared. Of course where God Valley actually went. There are many, many theories about it, you know, from it being Onigashima, to it being connected to the Laugh Tale, One Piece thing, the missing eye of Jaya. You can find all kinds of things on the internet. My interpretation of this uh, Roche Brasiliano, this Port Royal earthquake incident, is that for Hachinosu, it is very possible that Blackbeard could accidentally destroy the island if it turns out that Luffy fights there with him. Oh, just pulls up to the home territory and then sinks his island just to flex. Makes sense. I like it. Okay. But another thing I want to talk about before you move on about Roche Brasiliano is that, uh, you know, his personality was quite something. He was very barbaric, right? He was drunk. He was debauched. He would threaten to shoot <laughs> anyone who didn't drink with him. Uh, he roasted alive two Spanish farmers on wooded spits after they yeah. refused to hand pigs. You know, he typically cut off the limbs of prisoners, he roasted them all over fires, you know, the usual uh, pirate atrocities, right? But what I mean by this, how does this barbaric uh, trait relate towards One Piece? Well, remember Eustace Kid in the pre-time skip? When he entered the new world, he just crucified the entire pirate crew who were trying oh, to yeah. exit the new world, right? They tried to warn Kid and he just straight up crucified them, they're all dead. Yeah, that's aggressive. So that type of uh, energy and mentality could be someone who Zebek actually is. And, and you know, it's kind of funny because this whole crucifixion thing is very popular in Wano, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, Yasui got crucified. So just in Momo got in crucified. It's, it's just, uh, you know, it goes back to what you were saying about Kaido. You know, what did, what exactly did Kaido learn from Roxy Zebek? Well, of course, I think he learned about how to run a crew, right? What to do and what to not do, just like every member kind of like 
got this lesson. And I feel like Kaido's system of meritocracy amongst the Flying Six right. and his crew in general reflects、uh, Zebek's own system. I could totally see that. Right? The strongest will rise to the top. You know, they, they will eat the young or whatever. Yeah. So, this also makes me wonder, and I want to ask you this question Who was Zebek's right hand? Yeah, I was actually just about to ask you the same thing.、Um, I would like Shiki, just because I like Shiki. And Shiki is the most underrated, slept on character of all time in One Piece. You can't convince me any different. Because he fought off Garp and Sengoku. Okay, that's fucking crazy. But, you know, it, it'd be cool to have it be Shiki just to、um, give Shiki a little bit more of a story. I mean, I, I don't think it was Kaido, he was young. Uh, and、I've, I feel like it probably wasn't Big Mom, just kind of based on the way she talks about him.、Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, you're starting to fall off here with, with notable names. I, I doubt it was Whitebeard, you know? Whitebeard didn't really stand、uh, the Rock's Pirates.、Know. So it could be Captain John or Wang Z. Teching loves him. So it, it makes me think it would be Shiki. I don't know. What about you? I personally did not mind too much、uh, who the actual right hand or first mate, if there even was one, right? In the crew. Yeah, there, there might、uh, not be.、All. It could be just like the meritocracy. Like, we all have an equal share in this vote here, and, and that's what we're going to do. Or just everything that Captain Rock says goes. That might just be what it was. Well, even Kaido's crew has an actual right hand man, right? Of course, is, if, whether that's Jack or King, that can be debated in the comments below. I'm not going to talk about that. But、uh, going back to the question. So, yes, I agree, Shiki could be a possibility. I still got to put Newgate up there just because of his you know, older age compared to the rest of the pirates and more experience. And possibly,、uh, in terms of strength, maybe Zebek. Kept him around for certain reasons that I will talk about in my future video. Right.、Uh, I also think, I feel like Captain John is more like a left hand kind of man or someone who is auxiliary, if you get what I mean. Yeah, I can see that. Get, based on his personality and his fate later in the story, where his crew just stabbed him multiple times because he was too greedy, I feel like Captain John was more obsessed with like the financial aspects, with looting, than running the crew. Right. So, you know, he was the money man. Have you, have you heard, um, not to derail it too much, but you've heard the theory of Captain John being the father of Ulti in page one, right? There's not a whole lot of reason behind it. It was just that we know that Ulti and page one were taken in by Kaido because Kaido was friends with their father or knew their father, something like that. They both have purple hair, and I believe the corpse at Thriller Bark also had like a shade of purple hair. And I, I don't think Kaido was friends with many people. So it makes me think that their father was one of the Rock's pirates. I like this a lot. And, and, and if anyone、uh, hears this and you, you know, speak out in the comments, you know, let us know if you have your own theory about this Captain John and Wang Z、uh, spectrum. The video has been going for a little bit, so I think we might wrap up right about here, unless you have any closing remarks. Well, the only closing remark I really have to, is for the final question of you know, who the right hand man is. If you remember, with Roche Brasiliano, he had a first mate who became a captain, right? And he was known as Yellows or Yella. Oh, or yeah, Yella. in real life. This、uh, first mate, Yellow, he also worked with Sir Henry Morgan later on. I mean, you know that Sir Henry Morgan was a legendary pirate, but also a governor of Jamaica and more, more specifically, Port Royal. Yeah, there's another title.、So, Yep, I'm gonna mention Captain Morgan quite a bit. And you know, Morgan is also important in One Piece because we have two characters who share that name, don't we? I love Captain Morgan. Man can make a sick rum. Exactly. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how far this rabbit hole really goes. I feel like we've already uncovered a can of worms just by talking about this. There's like too many branches, and people are gonna be going all over pretty much pretty soon. Yeah. But that's all I have for you, really. All right, well, thanks so much for hopping on today. And make sure you subscribe to Captain Golden Boy. Boy, thank you. All right,、uh, and so I guess without any further ado, stay golden. Don't forget to check out this video on screen.